it's as Keith Richards says, you know, ten percent or ninety percent of everything is crap. Right. Hi, I'm Nick Gillespie with Reason TV, and today we're talking with Kurt Loder, the author of The Good, The Bad, and The God Awful 21st Century Movie Reviews. Kurt, thanks for talking to My us. Pleasure. He reviews movies for Reason.com and Creator Syndicate. He had a long stint at MTV reviewing movies for them. Uh, Kurt, in reading the book, the first thing that struck out uh, or uh, popped out to me is that most of these reviews are negative. Are you just a movie hater? No, no, I love movies. I think, you know, as with anything else, the uh, good movies are more rare than the bad ones because the, the pipeline has to be filled. You have to push stuff out. There always must be movies on the way. So not all of them are going to be good. Yeah. As Keith Richards says, you know, 10% or 90% of everything is crap. Right. So let's talk about the 21st century movie reviews. Uh, give us a couple of examples of movies that you think are really good. I really like uh, Zodiac, which is a great David Fincher movie, and it's about the Zodiac killings in San Francisco at the end of the 1960s and the amazing thing about the movie is there's so much information and it's two and a half hours long and the case was never solved and yet he brings it to a satisfying conclusion. It's just an amazing piece of work by a great director, I think. What are uh, another movie that you've found uh, particularly memorable and, and possibly under underappreciated? Uh, I think In Bruges is a really, really good movie that no one's seen. There's a movie called The Brothers Bloom. It was done by Ryan Johnson, who did Brick. It's a fantasy movie. It came out, got no promotion. And yet it's really, really good. What are the what are two or three bad movies that really stand out? Australia is a really bad movie. It's, it costs a lot of money, obviously. And it's it's kind of a, about Australia, but it's actually a Western. Uh, there's a cowboy, uh, there's a, a feisty widow, there's a cattle baron. So it's indistinguishable from a Western. And it goes on and on and on and on. You're going, when will it end? And then it it turns into another kind of movie, a World War II movie, and your heart just sinks, you know, because it won't stop. And it's just one of those movies you go, why was it made? What were you thinking? And, you know, you just, it's battling. Golden Compass was got off. I wonder if anybody even remembers it. I'm sure that New Line thought, you know, after The Lord of the Rings, we'll take this sort of semi-famous trilogy, His Dark Materials, we're going to make it into a franchise. They make the first one. And it was, it was just awful. It was so bad. So that's a good, uh, that's a market success story though, right? Because <laughs> when we don't have to take our kids. You devote an entire section of The Good, The Bad, and The God yes. Awful to Nicolas Cage. Why? Uh, he is an entire section to himself. He's a guy who's, you know, he comes from a filmmaking family, the Coppola's, and he's such a good actor, as we know. He's a really good actor, but his decisions about what movies to make, Ghost Rider, you know, like, why? Why are you doing this? And yet, he still is acting. You know, right. he doesn't, he just doesn't just blow it off. He right. throws himself into it. I'm giving a performance. And you got to admire that. You know, it's kind of, this movie sucks. But Nick, <laughs> yeah. you know, there's been a breakup of kind of mass markets. I mean, it's, you know, the number one movie today, the number one TV show, the number one bestseller uh, does not sell as many copies generally or hold as big a percentage of its audience as they did 20, 30, 50 years ago. Is that a good thing or a bad thing, do you think? Mm, I think it may be a, it's a good thing in that more, more movies get made, but there are more outlets for uh, for independent filmmakers. You can do more, you can get it on, on video, you, you, you can go on cable TV, there are special channels that'll handle that, so it's a great thing for young filmmakers. And the audience is bound to fragment, unless there's one unifying thing. Avatars seem to unify a lot of people, not me, but you know, people just loved it. And I think it was just doing uh, softening the ground for the Smurfs movie. You know, just, it's the blue skin people. <laughs> Kurt Loder, movie reviewer, for Reason.com, for Creator Syndicate, and the author of the great new collection, The Good, the Bad, and the God-Awful 21st Century Movie Reviews.